Hi everyone, it's John Robbins from Wintelect and Wintelect Now, and I'm here with John Peterson, one of our authors. So go ahead and introduce yourself, John. Well, thanks, John. Uh, <laughs> my name's John Peterson. I'm from Philadelphia, uh, born and raised, and uh, been uh, MVP for, I guess this is like 12th year? Oh 12th, my goodness. 12th year as an MVP? You're almost one of the original ones. Uh, actually, I was first an MVP in 1995. I was a Fox Pro MVP. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, we're really going to age <laughs> <pay> ourselves here. <laughs> Uh, there's actually quite a number of uh, ex Fox Pro MVPs that are yeah. that are here, and uh, so. But if I had kept, if I had kept that MVP award going the whole time, yeah, I think I would have been two years short of having won every year the award has been out. Wow, yeah. that's that's something. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. But uh, today I'm an yeah. ASP.NET, you know, IIS yeah. MVP, and yeah, uh, yeah it's it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, if you guys haven't guessed, we're at the MVP Summit. And, um, but I'm really excited to talk about John because he's getting ready to do a new session, a uh, new series for us at Wintelect Now on software and, and lawyering and patents. So let's talk about that for a little bit. So uh, I, am a, uh, I am an attorney uh, mm -hmm. licensed, in, uh, licensed in Pennsylvania. I was also in, in went to law school in New Jersey, and so licensed there as well. And uh, the idea behind this session is these these new series is about te uh, uh, intellectual property law for the technologist. Right. But uh, approached from a try to keep a lot of the legalese out of it and right. being very practical. And it's around the big areas of intellectual property, mm -hmm. copyrights, trademarks, patents. Mm -hmm. Also, trade secrets. Mm -hmm. That's the, the the little that's the little unknown one. Uh, trade secrets. So the best one are you know eleven herbs and spices and the Coke formula. Yeah. Because a patent you know expires yeah. you know, after so long. And uh, uh, but if you keep it a secret, it's <laughs> it's it's yeah. a secret forever and and uh, it's protectable. Yeah. Uh, but the big one for software developers particularly yeah. is the area of copyrights. Right. So with copyrights, of course, things are so freely available on the web. Mm -hmm. And just because something's available on the web, you think maybe you can take it, you can use it, but just mm -hmm. imagine that if you were writing a iOS app or you're writing mm -hmm. a website and it's a fairly successful application and you're using images and all of a sudden you get a call from Getty Images. They send you yep. a cease and desist letter, which actually happens mm -hmm. quite often. Mm -hmm. And in the United States, uh, if it's a registered copyright, which mm -hmm. it needs to be for statutory damages. So one piece of advice for people is when you get a cease and desist letter, don't ignore it, don't throw <laughs> it away, uh, but don't panic, get a lawyer. Yeah. But the big thing to always know is, well, people are asserting rights. The question is, is do they really have them? Right. But the thing you have to be concerned with are things like statutory damages mm -hmm. and how the whole process works and what the burdens of proof are right. on that side of it and what your rights are. Yeah. It, but also how to utilize technology with mm -hmm. searching to make sure that you're essentially what we call it is rights clearance. You know, doing yeah. your due diligence to make sure that you have rights to use these things. Are they in the creative commons? Are these things yeah. you really have rights to use? And if you don't, don't use them because yeah. it's just not worth it. And with agents and bots and things like that, they're combing the web. Yeah. They call it copyright trolling, but it's not, in my opinion, it's not really trolling. Um, yeah. You know, using somebody else's material like that is just not a good thing. Yeah. And it's becoming more and more pervasive around enforcement. Right. It's not, as, it's not as unlikely as it used to be. So the whole idea behind this is if you're a software developer, what are the things around copyrights that you need to be aware of? Mm -hmm. What are the differences between copyrights and trademarks and service marks and things like yeah. that? What do you have to do for your business, protecting your brand? And then there's the special role of patents and things yeah. like that. Um, it's a, a very expensive process to go through. Very few people could ever go through it. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you know, provisional patents and things like that, licensing, OSS, software licensing, those are all things that I'm going to go yeah. through in this series. Yeah, I'm really excited about this because we, we've dealt in our consulting business where you know, we've been expert witnesses and some things for, for various clients, but we've also seen clients, especially some startups, that go out and make, at the time, is a very simple mistake 
that cost them a lot of money. And so I, I it, you know, e even if you're just purely do, you know, you, you win the lottery and you do open source, you still have to deal with the legal ramifications of things. And so that's why I'm so excited about the, this series because I think, you know, it, it's being presented by a technical person to technical people. That, and that's what I think that, you know, because if you have, you know, somebody who's more of your traditional lawyer presenting it, because I've been to some of those, and right. it's a cure for insomnia. But <laughs> uh, they put me to sleep. Yeah. They certainly do. Yeah. And, and you do have to have a understanding of the problem domain right. yeah and so I was a technologist first before I ever went to law school yeah so uh, I definitely approach I approach the whole subject from the standpoint yeah. of a technologist obviously with legal expertise yeah and the goal is is to help make our customers and our viewers yeah. and the software community as a whole yeah. just you know better better informed right. around it and hopefully yeah. we'll help them prevent making some very serious mistakes. Right, because it, 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 an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure in this kind of thing, and just knowing what it is. And I think that's what, you know, so many software guys I know, oh, I've got this idea for a company, and they go out and, you know, didn't quite realize, you know, just just pay attention. And, I, and so I'm very excited about this. I, I really appreciate you. Oh, you know, I, I think this is, and, and plus I think it's neat that you, you have the, the, you're a lawyer, right, doing technology. I mean, that's so rare that you can be a subject matter expert in our field. Yeah, there's a couple of us out there, and it's, it, 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 it does help, and I uh, and I was really thrilled that, you know, Willick yeah. now uh, is progressive enough as a, as a uh, video provider yeah. and to be broad-minded enough to look at this as being just as important as the bits and bytes. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. no, I'm really excited to be doing the series. Uh, yeah. For 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 our group. Good. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, we we've, we've learned that you know sales and marketing and legal is 90 percent of business, right? You know what yeah. sales? You know what I I it's it's the biggest thing with especially younger yeah. folks coming into this business where yeah. I'm explaining we all sell. We're all representing, right. and if there are no sales, there's not much reason why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just because you build it doesn't mean anyone's coming. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Yes, sometimes it's a rude awakening. Yeah. Yes, and it's so it you know. But yeah, so I'm I'm very very excited about this. But you've also done uh, Visual Studio Online sessions for us. Yes. Uh, so I would say that 50% of my time is spent around ASP.NET as mm -hmm. a core web developer, uh, and the other half of my time. Uh, is around ALM. Mm -hmm. So I've been involved with the ALM Rangers mm -hmm. uh, and have uh, uh, really started embracing this whole idea, what I call you know the business of software development and process mm -hmm. and Scrum and, mm -hmm. and how to have team, work with teams and being better functioning, higher functioning yeah. teams and the role of tooling and yeah. how that's supposed to that's how it's supposed to make our life easier, right? Yeah. Supposed to. <laughs> and the thing is, I think, you know, it, for people, it, it, we have to really educate the community here and the world at large that it is not TFS 2008 anymore. No. It, this and is 2005, not your, yeah, right? This it's is, not, yeah, yes, yeah, it's, this it, is not your father's TFS. Or your grandfather's any, TFS, yeah. as, as the case may be, right? <laughs> right. So I, uh, you know, I... I was really excited when uh, you know, you know, Brian Harry's blog, and he's announcing yeah. about this whole idea that there's going to be essentially TFS in the cloud, but you know, but it's 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 a different flavor of TFS. Yeah. There are some differences, uh, but the idea that I don't have to worry about configuration anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's I just assume have root canal, <laughs> then. <laughs> configure TFS. Yeah. I, who, who wants yeah. to go through that? Yeah. And it was always the drudgery of the beginning of every project. It was like, oh, we have to configure TFS. Right. Um, it, to me, the whole dev test story and the integration of Azure websites with mm -hmm. uh, Visual Studio Online, and now that Git is a first class citizen, yeah. is source code control, it all just works together. Yeah. And so I was really excited to do the series around how. Uh, as a developer, and maybe I'm just part of a very small one, two, three member shop. Guess what? The Visual Studio Online experience is free. Yeah, there from are up some to five, yeah, up to yeah. five developers, it's free. That's what a lot of people don't realize. Right, and there's some premium things that you may have to drop some money for, you know, yeah. but not that much at the end of the day. But you can remain within the free, the freemium, free version of the product, right. and get a tremendous amount out of it. And I think what's very important. And we're seeing this now with a lot of the things coming out from ASP.NET 
and the cross-platform capabilities. It's my opinion that you know Microsoft is this, is this great organization around having built really good software for the enterprise. And in a way, this is a weird way to look at it, but I think Microsoft is now evolving and almost growing up in a way about getting into the mainstream yeah. with these other technologies. Because if you look at a lot of the young folks that are coming out of school today, they're typically not doing Visual Studio, mm -hmm. you know, they're, but they're, they're, they're into GitHub. Yeah. They're into all of the JavaScript frameworks, whether, you know, whether it's Node or the, the uh, task managers like Grunt and, yeah. and, and making all these things work together. You know, TFS or you know, Visual Studio Online can play along with that entire yeah. experience. Completely seamlessly. Absolutely. And I think that what this is all doing now is the maturity and experience of Microsoft which I think that maturity and experience is something that's sorely needed right now yeah. in the business. We see a lot of half-baked stuff that gets about half-baked until it's the next flavor du jour mm -hmm. of JavaScript frameworks. And it's taking a toll um, on things. Enterprises are getting a bit uh, yeah. edgy and they're getting a little bit concerned. And, and I actually think that this is an area where Microsoft can actually be the adult in the room and say, look, we're, we're mindful of all the good things that are out there around mm -hmm. software development and, and open source, and certainly Microsoft is being a really good open source citizen. Um, but at the same time, we're very mindful of what got us here, and there's a lot of process, a lot of discipline, and we just don't put things out there in hoping that people are going to take it. Do we make mistakes? Absolutely, but, uh, but there's a lot of community engagement. And I think all of that, is TF, uh, Visual Studio Online is one of those areas where you're seeing a lot of this community engagement. Mm -hmm. And so it's really exciting, and it's going to allow us to attract some younger folks into the Microsoft fold, yeah. because there's a lot of really good stuff. Yeah, and you know, I, you know, we're here at the MVP Summit, and, and this is, it's, I don't know how you have felt, but this is, this is a different Microsoft. I mean, you know, I, you know, we we both have been in the business for a little bit. You can uh, tell from our gray hair. Yes, I've got. <laughs> yes, yes. And and you know, I, it was uh, you know the 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 first demos we saw were for cross platform. The first you know the the discussion was all about you know iOS and Android. I, I, it was very very different. And sure, we've been hearing some of this from Microsoft over the last you know six nine months, but it was it was in your face. I think, so part of the group, so I'm also an ASP insider. Mm -hmm. So that group, which uh, they call themselves the Lesser Scots, Scott Hunter, <laughs> Scott Hanselman, right. that's, their, that's their terminology. Uh, the one thing, and I, and I said this to Scott Hunter, I guess it was probably a year or two ago. I'm like, how did you do it? Yeah. How in the world did you get certain things open sourced? Because I would never know a Microsoft yeah. lawyer to really sign off on anything. And yeah. he just said, well, we just wore them down, kind of. You know, yeah. in other words, just yeah. presented a good, yeah. compelling yeah. argument to them. Yeah. And now it's um, it, it's no longer the unknown. So I'm with you. This has probably been one. This has been one of the most exciting yeah. summits that I have been to in terms yeah. of really getting things out there now. Where I, I work, I use a MacBook Pro or mm -hmm. a MacBook Air, excuse me. Yeah. And uh, and, I, and I use a MacBook Pro. Right. And mm -hmm. and I, I like the portability of it. And I am really excited about the fact that all of the, you know, the what was formerly pri uh, Katana mm -hmm. is now you know come over into you know, ASP.NET V Next, mm -hmm. which is all open source, and the idea that we can run these things on a Mac. Yeah. Syed Hashimi, who's one of the Visual Studio senior product managers, mm -hmm. uh, wrote his nice series on Sublime mm -hmm. with some plugins yeah. to get a somewhat Visual Studio-like experience, yeah. but on the Mac. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, I'm doing, along with a colleague of mine, Glenn Henriksen from Norway, mm -hmm. we're actually going, we're porting Nerd Dinner. So I was involved in the mm -hmm. Nerd Dinner project. Right. And we're now going to port Nerd Dinner to vNext, yeah. but we're going to have one code base, but that one code base will equally work on the Mac as it will on Windows. And we're going to yeah. do this as both an exercise around the process yeah. to make sure that we're getting a full experience in, in both environments, mm -hmm. that it all compiles in both 
and it works. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, we're helping you know Microsoft in the process as well. Well, I, I think that that state that idea nerd dinner is going to run on a Mac and Windows. I, I mean, that's bizarre. But the I, big I mean, thing, but the know, big thing is this: is that I want is if I'm a team lead and there are all these really smart kids. Yeah. I can say this now. I just turned 50. I got my oldest is 23 and my youngest is 19. So when I see these kids, uh, it's just great. You know, it's like, I could be the father of yeah. my 80%. Is, yeah. I'm not. But uh, the, the deal is, it's like, I, I, uh, I just yeah. sort of look back. It's like, the, it, I look at some of this really big, uh, yeah. good create creativity coming out of these you know, young yeah. kids and everything. It's, yeah. And it's really, it's really cool. You want, you want those people... As part of your development team, yeah. But the fact of the matter is, they're not likely to, they're not likely to be using Visual Studio. They're mm -hmm. not likely to be using ASP.NET. They're yeah. they're not likely, oftentimes, to have a PC. Mm -hmm. So we're here to solve problems. Yeah. Uh, it shouldn't matter that if 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 a if a developer is equally at home with they want sublime and they yeah. want to, as long as they can get all the packages and they can get mm -hmm. all of the the necessary bits and why can't they just build stuff and work in an environment that's comfortable to them while other people are working in windows mm -hmm. and we're all writing the same stuff yeah. that's the way it ought to be and i yeah. think that's what we're getting to so well yeah thing. and i and i think microsoft deserves a just huge kudos for making that happen i agree because it's uh it, it this is not your father's Microsoft. It's not your grandfather's you Microsoft go. anymore. Right. It, it really is, is is different. It was just, it's just been an amazing summit. So, what, what's been the coolest thing you've seen at the? I would MVP, say, I MVP would, uh, I would say the, uh, 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 well, on a, uh, I guess talking about the ASP mm -hmm. ASP stuff and yeah. really this this whole notion of taking it to the next level of, of really yeah. working. Uh, working with ASP bits in in the Mac, you yeah. know, I think is a is something that I'm focusing on, yeah. um, and of course, just the level of engagement between uh, the product teams I'm involved in uh, with with uh, the the community and yeah. specifically the folks that sometimes I you know I get to see once a year. So mm -hmm. it's it's definitely a great time yeah. to have some fellowship with. And uh, you know, hanging yeah. out with people that you may see once a year or once every yeah. other year. Well, finally putting a face to that email you've been, email address you've been swapping emails with. Well, there are a lot year. of people that certainly <laughs> get emails from me and they say, "Oh, that's the guy, right?" You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm and, the same way. Yes, yeah, so it's like, yes, that's that. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm the yeah. guy. So, uh, but uh, uh, but you know, coming here, uh, you know, once a year, it's uh, so it's a wonderful place to be. We got a yeah. little bit of sun. Yeah, just. I was we, we, did, we didn't want to spoil you. Well, I was here. I was here a couple of years ago during that. You had a sixty some odd day stretch yeah. where there was sunshine, and apparently people yeah. were starting to freak out around. Oh there. yeah, we didn't know so, how to whoa, handle it. We didn't know we, how to handle We need it. the rain back. Yeah. <laughs> So. Yeah. Well, there's a reason they don't schedule these during the summer because our summers are the greatest summers in the U.S. And you would never leave. It is just it makes sense. sunny, breezy, seventy-two, absolutely gorgeous. So you know. That's why we have this in, in November, because you guys had all move here otherwise and jack the housing prices up worse than they already are. And they're pretty high now. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, good, John. Thank you very much for Absolutely. sitting down and talking to us. Looking forward to more, all of those sessions on, on software and, and what developers need to do to think about lawyering and the patents and the trademarks and everything else. Absolutely. So thank you very much. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Okay. All right.